Well, what better way to brighten a dark winter day than a new e-mountain bike, but not any old e-mountain bike, one with lights and the world's first ever high beam, low beam system. Today on the MBN Show, we'll be looking at Pace's new RC170E. So Pace Cycles from North Yorkshire in the UK have got their first ever e-mountain bike. It's 170 mil travel. It's got a Shimano EP8 motor with a 726 watt hour battery in there, all alloy chassis and a either a 29 or a 27.5 rear wheel with a 29 up front. Uh, Chris, Pace Cycles, I mean, what an iconic brand. Can you, do you remember their RC500 from back in the late 90s? I do, I remember it was Stefan Gleed, one of the team riders, had that cool anodized red sort of pinky frame, which was amazing. And the engineering on these bikes is absolutely top, top notch as it is on this e-bike. It looks super yeah. exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that bike from the late mm. 90s, as you mentioned, Stefan Gleed, mm -hmm. uh, James Richards rode those bikes. And I think they had a, a, a square, square a box section frame, yeah. didn't they? Of course, and not forgetting Chris Ackrig as well, who was also on pace, wasn't he? But more on of the trial course. bike. Of course, of course, there's a connection here, isn't yeah. there? But uh, <laughs> they, also did, they also did an RC100, I think, which was a hardtail mm. uh, with a fork up front, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was uh, probably exciting stuff. You know, I've always loved pace, an iconic, uh, British brand. It's great to see uh, a new bike from the UK and I think maybe one of the highlights is the fact that it's got uh, a high beam and the world's first ever dip system on an mm -hmm. e-man bike. Yeah, so I think that's quite important. I think when you're out night riding, how annoying it is if you're driving a car because some of those bike lights these days are actually seem to be more powerful than, than some car headlights. So a lot of road users actually get really annoyed with bike riders. So they've got that um, dip beam on there, which I think is a really cool function, isn't it? I think it's even got a handlebar switch on there, which is, is really cool. No more fumbling around trying to find that switch like you do have on other lights. Do you think that uh, do you think that in the future lights, you know, we've seen them on such bikes as the High Bike Fly On mm -hmm. uh, and, and the Merida E160, which we rode recently. Do you think that's now going to become an integral part of an e-mountain bike in the future? I think so, because if you think here in the UK, especially like now, the day's pretty much over at four o'clock and you've got all that time, perhaps, you know, when your kids are in bed and you want to go out riding, but it's pitch black. But I think if you had lights on your bike, you could just jump on, go off for a ride, no more hassling, thinking, oh, have I charged my lights and getting the brackets and that. If it was all there ready to go, I think it would inspire a lot more people to get out there for a ride. Well, it definitely would me anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is it is a faff, mm -hmm. isn't it, to, to mount your lights to your handlebars or mm -hmm. to your helmet, what have yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, but this bike then is a big hitting bike, 170 yeah. mil travel, mm -hmm. coil suspension front and rear, four bar system on this bike. So I'm mm -hmm. guessing it's going to be a pretty plush setup. Definitely, especially as you've got those coil shocks on the rear. Now that seems to be coming a bit more of a norm. We've seen a lot of bikes recently with coil shocks on the rear. You think that's something that's going to become the regular on the e-bike, Steve? Uh, probably for the likes of you when you're doing those big jumps uh, and those <laughs> downhill. Uh, do you know, but, so what's really interesting is it's another brand that's got a, a mix of 29, 27.5, mm -hmm. but you've got the flip chip option on the bike. So mm -hmm. you can you can go for either a fast rolling 29 on the back or yep. that hard hitting 27.5. Nice. Another feature I think is really cool on this bike is the not one but two different bash guards on there. You've got a rock deflector on the down tube, which I think is really important if you're out riding on those European tracks. And you've got a proper skid plate underneath the uh, motor as well. So if you're getting a bit trialsy or you're getting rock strikes on the bottom, you know that you're going to be really well prepared. Uh, they've got a radiator uh, vent as well for the battery to keep it cool. And apparently it gives it a little bit more range too. So I think, you know, yeah. getting a bit of moto inspiration from this stuff, which is pretty cool. So two things there you touched upon, uh, the mm. bash gutter and the battery. Now 726 mm. watt hours puts that up there on, on one of the biggest capacity e-mountain bike batteries yeah. in the market. Now apparently it's 40 mil shorter mm. in the down tube um, than the equivalent 625 watt hour battery, uh, which, also, which also means it's gonna lower that center of gravity. But mm -hmm. another key part of this bike is actually Actually, that the the motor orientation is flat. Now, if the motors are sort of rotated in the frame, like mm -hmm. many e-mounted bikes are, that puts the mass higher. So, therefore, you mm. know, a higher centre of gravity. So, some very nice thinking going into this bike. Definitely, I think it's going to be a really well. You know, I'd love to have a go on this bike, Steve. I think we should uh, go on and have a spin on it. I think it'd feel absolutely amazing. Uh, now, as ever, Chris, uh, mm -hmm. we, we've got to geometry. talk. We've got to talk geometry. <laughs> I, was waiting, I was waiting for it. <laughs> 
<laughs> We've got to talk geometry numbers. Uh, I mean, a couple, of, a couple of key ones here. 63 mm. degree head angle, which yeah. I, I guess is expected for a bike with 170 mil travel. But, you know, similar to the likes of the Specialized Caneva, we've got mm. a 78 degree suitib angle, which means that's going to be yeah. a really, really good position for climbing in. No, definitely. It's got all the bang on numbers, doesn't it? Looking through that spec sheet there. 504 millimeter reach. Great. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, great for uh, riders who are like six foot and above. And yeah, um, yeah I, I think all, all in all, they put a really nice package together there. Uh, I definitely. don't know what the prices are yet. Is this still a prototype bike or is yeah, it on? It's still in development. So they're saying just keep an eye on their website and their Instagram and social just for updates on that bike. But it will be coming. Um, looks like it's going to be a 2021 bike, possibly later on in the year. So yeah, exciting stuff. Yeah, so uh, what better to, like I said, to brighten up the dark <laughs> winter days in the Northern Hemisphere uh, with a, than a new bike from North Yorkshire in Pace Cycles. And like me and Chris said, a brand with a huge heritage of uh, two-wheel sport. As you can see, we're feeling pretty festive here on EMBN, so it's time to announce the lucky winner of our recent Muckoff giveaway, where Muckoff gave away £1,500 worth of product to keep you and your e-bike looking spanking clean all winter. And that lucky winner is Andrew Richards from the UK. So look out for an email from us in your inbox to get all your delivery details. Wow. Nice one. Chris, that is a lot of muck off product, right? You're gonna have it to uh, you're gonna have to show me how to use some of this muck off stuff for <laughs> one point, you know. All the all the gonna be I was going to say, it's going to be a year's worth of supply for Andrew. It's going to keep his bike looking super fresh. Crikey, it might be a year's worth of supply for Andrew. That would be two <laughs> decades supply uh, for myself. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Uh, that pre the pressure washer has been flat out the last few weeks. I can assure you that, Chris. Nice. And don't forget that the shop is open. Uh, I think the uh, the festive uh, Black Friday gold logo shirts are getting pretty low on stock, but we've got blue, we've got India ink, we've got plum, we've got green, we've got red, and of course we've got the team kit. So get involved in the shop and get your friends and relatives some product for Christmas. Well, it's been a busy week here on EMBN and it continues to be in the weeks ahead. Now, coming up on the channel on Friday, Chris is taking us through some winter setup tips for your e-mountain bike. Well, yeah, Chris, give us a summary of what's involved in that one. Yeah, so all those setup tips to help you get the best out of your e-bike over those winter periods. We're talking, you know, not getting covered in mud and making those parts last a little bit longer too. So yeah, look out for that one. Uh, and then on Monday, we are back here in Ace Cycles to look at how to find uh, the right size e-mountain bike. Right, it's time for comments and questions from all the recent videos that went out last week. And we've got a load of feedback, haven't we, Steve? We've got lots of comments on how not to ride an e-bike with Ollie Wilkins. Well, do, do you really need to go that far? I mean, just watch what you riding a bike is, how not to ride an e-bike. Uh, you can see these videos every day of the week. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, uh, no, some great comments, as Chris mm -hmm. said. Now, the first one's from Cool uh, CMSC is, easily the biggest disrespect is barging past on an e-bike, or any bike for that matter. Yeah, True. it is. But it then is. again, it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to give them a wide berth, I think, and just friendly hello, and just carry on with that ride up the hill. But it is awkward, isn't it? You know, mm. there are there, there are moments of awkwardness. Do, do you actually go, do you ride past someone at like, you know, I, at I, maybe twice the pace? It's difficult. I, I was gonna say, yeah, I think it becomes awkward on if there's someone really like blowing out their ass going up a climb on a normal bike and you're there in turbo mode and you go past, as you say, four times as fast as them, then it does become, I don't know, I, I do sometimes ease off and just sort of <laughs> give them a bit of a, you know, Bit of a thing that they're doing all right. <laughs> yeah, awkward, awkward moments. Definitely. Uh, and this one, from, this one from Steve mm -hmm. Taylor. A bell when riding, it makes such a difference being able to politely give another trail user the early warning of my approach. So I often get a big I... thank you for ringing the bell. You're, you're, yeah. you're familiar with ringing the bell, aren't you? I am, as part of my Sunday <laughs> communion down at the church. But yeah, all jokes aside, I think a bell does make a massive difference. Uh, my dad actually has one on his bike and the amount of people that you can actually make aware of your presence is really good. If I'm out in the woods, it's all about doing a skid, pulling the front brake, or you know, making your brakes howl to make that bell sound. And I'm sometimes wondering why I don't actually have a bell on my bike. It would be good, but it's then you turn it up is. at the trail center, you know, or the dirt jump spot with your mates, and they'd be like, what the hell have you got a bell on your bike for? Is yeah, that... or, or why have you worn out your rear tire? Uh, well, actually, it's because <laughs> I've been riding some busy trails and yeah, I need to tell people to come in. I, I, I saw you guys. 
I was going to yeah, say, go I saw Doddy actually had like a cowbell thing on his bike, which you, it would ring all the time when you were riding or approach to someone, so you don't manually have to do it. But you can like flip a lever and it mutes it. It's kind of pretty cool, kind of like those cows in, uh, you see on the hills in France, just ding, dong, ding, you can hear it come in. A bit extreme though, right? right? A, Maybe. a bit extreme. Uh, <laughs> actually, actually, Owen, have we got some bells in this shop? Martin has got some bells in the workshop. No, she has to pick one up. Are right, they, are they, I don't need one. I don't need. Are they, are they, are they a high sale thing? You know, no, big numbers. No, generally the stuff that comes on a bike. Okay, nice. Gen there you go. Generally they come on a bike. So, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say we've got some great comments here on your Enduro, your Kinevo uh, video, Steve, as well. So we've got this one in from Smidjilko. He's saying you missed a trick here by not using a 29 front wheel. Enduro bikes these days seem to go full 29 or mullet setup. What do you think about the mullet setup, Steve? Uh, well, it's, I won't use that, the M word, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not that we missed a trick. It's mm -hmm. just that in this instance, we just chose to uh, compare the bike with uh, a 27.5 single crown fork mm -hmm. up front. Now, obviously, the next stage is to go for a, uh, a 29 170 fork up front and that big wheel. I think that e will you know, even open up more opportunities for that bike. Definitely. You've got Michael Widmer here. He says, thanks for that. Now, please do the opposite approach. Make a Levo more of a gravity bike. Well, uh, actually, Michael, that is something we did recently where we took a Levo and we set it up six or seven different ways. So we actually did put 170 mil, actually it was 180 mil travel fork yeah. on the Levo with a mix of wheel size. We went from 29 to 27.5, a mix wheel size, 29, 27.5. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we've been through the whole shebang on the old mm -hmm. Levo. And there's a video uh, up on the channel. We'll leave a link just down below for that one. Nice. Right, it's time for Send and Tech of the Week, and we've got a couple of really good entries here this time. First up, we've got Carsten here, and he's been out on his Hercules NS Sport in Velba, Germany, but had a little bit of a mishap here by the looks of it. He says, a massive pedal strike on my rock, hit my pedal, it's very tip, so hard that the thread was ripped out of the crank. And to get able to pedal back to his car, he stopped and asked at a nearby farm for a big bolt and two nuts, and used that as an emergency pedal, and it worked really well. And that's really nice thinking there, loving that. I've had that pretty similar situation where I've had the pedal fall off the end of the spindle. And I did have it once when I was doing a 360 on a jump and the pedal actually flew off the spindle and I had a huge crash on there, um, cracking my helmet and everything. But I think that is a really good way of getting back. You can actually ride back if your pedal falls off, you can actually just use the spindle to ride home, which is quite cool. Um, and moving on to the send of the week, and we have our regular contributor here, Ian, with a bit of POV footage from shredding down one of the trails at Wind Hill out in the Peak District. And he's absolutely flying there on his Kineva. That looks an amazing trail, and you're hitting that with some good speed. Nice one, Ian. And we love seeing all your videos and your pictures here on EMBN. So don't forget, if you've got anything related to e-biking, get involved and use the uploader. The details for that are on screen now. Wow, now I've got to say, uh, last week's images from you guys were absolutely mind-blowing and truly inspirational stuff. And to kick things off this week, we have got Dustin out in Austin, Texas, with his 2020 Specialized, getting some air there. Uh, Dust, uh, Dustin says, just your average guy uh, getting comfortable with more distance between the tire and the dirt. Uh, now, next up, we've got Anders with a bit of snow action here, and it's got eGenius 720 Plus 2016 with an ice spiker a pro tire out for a spin in Lulia in Sweden. It's minus four, can you believe that? 
Um, now, moving across, where are we going? We are now heading east to uh, Hunter. The Hunter Chargers, who are a big e-bike group uh, from Australia. They have been at it again. Uh, and look, I'm having an amazing time here out in Barrington Tops National Park, New South Wales, Australia. Um, they say that they recently did a group ride to Carey's Peak in the Barrington Tops. The ride was 30K and 1,200 meters of climbing, 500 watt hour motors, just made it with plenty of energy conservation. Like to see it. Uh, lots of stream crossings and banter there. Uh, looks like fantastic time uh, out there in, or down there, should I say, in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, guys, fantastic shots. Uh, love to see what you're up to. Uh, keep them coming. Right, well, we're in a bike shop and we're also in the bike vault. Uh, now, kicking six things off this week is Giles and what looks like Trek Rail 5 to me, Chris, in NATO green. That is a nice shot, isn't it? I think that is that a NATO, well, not a NATO base, but it's definitely some sort of military thing. It's uh, apparently it's a World War II air base. Yeah. So it must be like uh, a watchtower thing. That's nice, right? It is nice. You think it's nice or not super nice? Uh, I think so. I think the next one. I think the next one is definitely super nice. This is Thomas uh, and his Thron 2 in Schweiberg, Freiburg, Switzerland. What yeah. a name. Schweiberg, Freiburg. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's super nice, right? It has got to be super nice, hasn't it? <laughs> next up, we've yeah. got Martin here with his Cube Stereo Hybrid 140 up in Hick Lodge in Sw uh, Swadlinicote. Uh, early morning ride, blowing the cobwebs off, just after lockdown, so nice, I think, nice shot. What do you think, Stephen? Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you, don't Steve and me. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, Thomas Candel Neo 5 in North Trail, Winlatter. Uh, mm -hmm. Good bit of Adam Brayton territory there, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's a nice shot, a beautiful uh, part of the world. Um, nice. What about Tracy? Now, I love a good brace of bikes, this is in Princetown, <laughs> Dartmoor. Now, Princetown, obviously where the famous prison is in the middle mm -hmm. of the uh, moors there. Uh, this is a ghost teru, a brace of them. I, I, I'm loving that uh, that combo, Chris, with the green and the yellow. Does look good, doesn't it? Nice matching bikes, nice backdrop. I think that's a super nice area to go riding as well. So I think that's got to be one of our first super nices for the for today's yeah. show, I think, Steve. Fantastic. Nice one, Tracy. Wow. Fantastic Espin stuff. Espin here in the snow on his Focus Jam 2 up in Lysboth Road in Norway. Exploring the remains of the winter wonderland after second quarantine was lifted. Um, and wow, that looks like insanely deep snow, doesn't it? So yeah. surely you can't ride off the roads over there then, otherwise you just... <laughs> be in like 30 feet of snow, surely. Yeah, madness, <laughs> isn't it? The sky looks amazing in that as well, doesn't it? I think that's got to be another super nice. Whoa, crikey. Now, moving uh, up, actually moving now south to uh, Perth in Scotland, mm -hmm. Jason, Mondrake Level R, 29. Exposure six pack and Diablo lights on there. Uh, ignoring the creepy snapping twigs to take spectacular photos at the top uh, of Perth, or should we say Perth? It's nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Moving on, we've got Lucas here with his high bike Enduro All Mountain 3.0 in Poland, um, up on the Enduro trails on the Silver Mountain, exploring new areas. Very nice autumnal shot there. Bike's a little bit funky in this position, so I'm just going to give that one a nice. Oh, Chris, why? Well, I'd have gone the yeah. other way with that. Yeah. I love a bit of. I like uh, the backdrop, love... but the bike's a bit. It's, I don't know. I'd like to see it a bit more side on and front wheel a bit higher. Yeah, okay, bit. right, right. Now moving on is Stephen, track rail, another track rail, uh, track rail. And again, this is in Perth as well, Chris. What have we got here? Big e-bike scene going entry. on. Double entry, double entry here. Chris? Yes, I'm, I'm listening, Stephen. Okay, right. Uh, picture here taken from Macduff Monument. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so obviously, group of mates there up in the hills. I think that's nice. Uh, and finally, we have got a Canevo expert in none other than the Surrey Hills that hot spot of mountain bike action here in the UK. Uh, I'm surprised, uh, yeah, great. Good, look, good looking color that, I like that colorway on the uh, on the Kniva actually. But you know, it's quite nice rather than the stealthy black. So what we've ended up on a nice or super nice of this, Steve? I don't think that bike should be led against that uh, information display. No, just a nice on that. But more importantly, what are we gonna go for for bike of the week in this amazing, 
entries. I'm just going it's back through them now. Got to be, it's got to be the mountains, right? I was going to say Thomas, yeah, with his uh, Focus Thron up in Schweiberg in Freiburg in Switzerland. I think definitely yeah, takes to me. Schweiberg in Freiburg. I mean, it's one of all time, right? <laughs> definitely. And, and, and Freiburg is uh, one hell of a spot to ride mm. an e-mountain bike if you guys ever get the chance to go there. Uh, fantastic area. Yeah, keep those oh, entries it. coming in. Nice or super nice. Could be your next week's show. So love seeing all those bikes here. And as Steve says, that is it for this week's show. Yeah, so uh, let's know your thoughts on Pace's new RC170E mm -hmm. with the uh, high beam and dip headlights with the alloy chassis, coil suspension, a uh, super steep c tube angle, slack head angle, low bottom bracket, and short chain stays. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.